channel Jokers Wild, your number one alternative for entertainment related news, views and reviews. I'm your host, The Joker, and I've got my boy Ace doing the editing. Hello! Anyway, today we'll be taking a look back at 2018's low budget sci-fi affair, Incoming, which went straight to DVD. Is that still a thing? Well, DVDs. yeah, you should always hang on to your physical media, you know, especially all that malarkey with HBO okay, and Okay, let's Disney. begin. 2018 saw the home release of Incoming, a futuristic action movie starring British martial arts action star Scott Adkins. Big Ben, built back in 1859 after 13 years of gruelling construction work, has since become one of London's most popular tourist attractions. Two minutes into the movie, well, it's time to head back to the tour bus. Turns out this was the work of shadowy terrorist group, the Wolf Pack. We then cut to a SWAT team storming the flat of a man suspected of being affiliated with a terrorist group called Argon. Not to be confused with Aragon of Middle Earth fame. <laughs> Before you can say, I uh, hope you're gonna pay for that door. He, along with five others, are taken to an undisclosed location for interrogation and a potential explanation. Just wanted to keep the rap going. We then pick up the story five years later with Argon, no, being tortured for information, namely the identity of the Wolfpack leader. Cue the type of steam bath you probably wouldn't want on the spa day. Topped off with a death metal playlist that pretty much lives up to its name. Let me stop right there. I always wonder, whenever it comes to these torture scenes, why is it always death metal? <laughs> why can't it be anything else? What can it be? Oh, I don't know. Okay, fine doesn't quite work right. the same. What if he's a fan of death metal? <laughs> yeah, it's like you're playing it to him thinking he's gonna be uh, screaming and all that and instead he's, he's like, like, oh yeah, turn a bad boy up. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. Starts going full MJ all up in there. <laughs> trying to shazam on his phone or thing, I don't know. Just, uh, yeah. Finally, we get a look at our three remaining characters. Two pilots on a supply run. Oh, wait, my bad. Forgot to mention all that interrogation stuff was on a spaceship. At this point in the movie, he's kind of wondering the obvious. Hang on a minute. Where's the rest of the crew? Aha! Aha! Turns out, due to budget restraints, there are no crew. Just one guy. Sure, they try and give a reason it just for doesn't it. Doesn't add up. I mean, really? You've been torturing terrorists for the past five years. Just one of these guys would be pretty dangerous. You've got half a dozen. And you're on your own. If just one of them breaks out. Who are you going to call? <laughs> Ain't going to be Ghostbusters. And you're okay with that? Mate, come on. Day one, interviews. I'll be like, uh, yeah, I have a question. When I'm all, you know, tucked up in bed. After a long, hard day's work. Or when I need to use the... Who's going to take over the... Back to our three remaining characters. Two pilots on a supply run, along with a doctor. Her mission to evaluate the well-being of those in captive. One scene leads to another, and they're all out, and have taken over the ship, with a plan to crash it into the streets of Moscow. Why Moscow? What, to trigger World War Three? You know, this being an American space station. Not a great plan. Or I know it all. Wait, shouldn't you be the now band of unlikely heroes? <laughs> Very unlikely. Up against the clock in a race against time to stop them. Incoming is directed by Eric Zaragoza. And mate, if I've just butchered your name, well, you could always change it to Smith. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> now, according to talent directory Industry Jump, Eric served in the United States Marine Corps. And at the end of his service, he was encouraged by his lieutenant colonel to pursue his talents in storytelling, having earned his bachelor's and master in motion pictures and entertainment I'm, I'm business. That was a mouthful. This is his full-length feature film directorial debut. Will color me pink and call me a piggy bank. Kinda puts everything into perspective. Lack of cohesive storytelling, awkward character beats, bad pacing. But look, the guy had a vision. Can't take that away from him. And you know what? Low budget movies with minimal sets have worked in the past. I mean, check out Ryan Reynolds Buried. You have to help me, you have to help me, I can't breathe. 
idea but where that movie creatively maximizes a low concept this movie unfortunately gets buried under the weight of its ideas most of the cast do a decent job with what they're given it's just the characters that are playing Aaron McCusker an actor whose screen credits include Bohemian Rhapsody, Dexter and Shameless plays a character called Bridget pretty much spends the entire movie looking bored out of his skull I don't know maybe these are outtakes maybe the guy was just sitting down there minding his own business cameras on him he doesn't know he's thinking where did it all go wrong why am I here meanwhile the crew's like we're out of money we're out of time print it either way his character really doesn't go and you do anything then we have Michelle Lahane playing Dr. Stone now her character she makes some of the most naive decisions I've yet to Why? see. Why? I don't get One it. One particular decision it actually causes ridiculous. I mean, made. come on. I mean, okay, look. I get Ripley it. Ripley in the Alien movies. Sarah Connor in Terminator. Ray Palpatine in Star Wars. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but no, I get what they did. These are strong, iconic female characters that inspired even men. No to Hollywood. And her arc does follow her somewhat similar trajectory but oh, man. then we have Lucas Loran Lauren plays Kingsley the interrogator now, I actually think he did really well in the part yeah it was a sneeze bag and a bit of a sadist unhealthy addiction to torture porn quite literally in one scene but damn it he was the type of guy you called in when you had that one job that nobody else had the guts to do just not the type of guy you want dipping his hand in your favourite cookie jar. Main bad guy duties go to... V v this guy. Playing the role of Argon. No, now look. <laughs> Make no mistake, when this guy's on the screen, you're watching a different movie. Maybe it is a different movie, they just edited it His performance here... Well, it's among the best, isn't it? it? Him and Lucas, they pretty much carried the movie. Dramatically speaking but the real star here the one whose face graces the movie poster well, let's be honest the reason why you're watching this movie in the first place scott Atkins. scott plays a character called riser riser is an american pilot who's well just angry constantly always annoyed oh really probably the most unlikable character he's played since expendables 2 but that was intentional here i'm watching him get into fights and i don't know who i'm supposed to be rooting for that's not even the issue not my issue anyway no no, no. my issue are the fights themselves i'm used to watching this <laughs> Not this. Because truth be told, if you're an Adkins fan, you prob Oh for the Because truth be told, if you're an Adkins fan, you're probably not gonna find much entertainment here. The film just didn't deliver. So ultimately, given this film Thing is, I actually think of a little nip and tuck. This could have been a not bad effort. All right. So what does it need? Well, apart from the glaringly obvious. Yeah, man. Hold out, Rick, man. Hold out. I have one or two ideas in what I like to call the 60, 60 second, second fix. Okay, let's ride. These characters need to be on the ship too. They just point. have that lot dressed up in some guard uniforms. Hey, no, I start with one of these lower tier characters being tortured. They're after two things the leader of the wolf pack, the mysterious operation, Project Endgame. What is it? At the end of the torture, he suddenly does a run, runs down the hallway, gets to a window, and sees. The first time the audience and the character realise they're not on Earth. Then these three show up. Two pilots and a doctor. One pilot lost his family to a terrorist attack. Secretly out for revenge. It's the doctor's first mission. She's always looking for the good in people. But one pilot's not what he appears to Turns be. Turns out he's the brother of Argo. Turns out he's the leader of the terrorist group. Turns out this was all part of his plan. Endgame is revealed to be crashing the space station into Moscow. Now it's up to these three to stop them. Which they do. But not before he sacrifices his life for the mission. Did he win his character? He gets to take revenge on the man who killed his family. We get to watch. Doc has to make a decision. Sacrifice the prisoners' lives to save Earth. Or don't. But she does. So thank you. She saves the day. He saves her. And I may have just saved the film.
but that's just my take. What's your opinion? If you have an opinion, comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember, in the words of the great Maximus. Okay, ha why would you even? <laughs> Brothers! What we do in life? Echoes in eternity.